If you want to get in contact with me, the best way to do it is on Patreon. If you want behind the scenes footage, if you want exclusive content, if you want your product or music on this show, the best way to do that is on Patreon. Peace, y'all. Johnny Fastlane here. So, Lil Wayne endorses Donald Trump, and T.I. confronts a restaurant owner who kicked out black people for wearing sneakers. Joe Button says he has COVID-19, and an employee at a restaurant owned by 2 Chains gets shot and killed. Let's talk hip-hop. All right, Joe, so this is a picture of Donald Trump and Lil Wayne, right? Uh, Lil Wayne goes on his Twitter. He says, I just had a great meeting with the real Donald Trump, uh, president of the United States. Besides what he's done for criminal reform so far, uh, the platinum plan is going to give the, com uh, the community real ownership. He listened to what we had to say today and assured that he will and can get it done, right? Um, and this is just crazy as hell, right? So everybody on Twitter is like, oh my God, I can't believe it. Lil Wayne, our GOAT, he is endorsing Donald Trump. Trump, this can't be life, right? But really and truly, this is not surprising, and it seems like life to me. I mean, Lil Wayne has gone on record multiple times saying that he never experienced racism, but that's because Lil Wayne has been, you know, rich since he was like 10 or 11 years old, right? Lil Wayne um, shot himself trying to commit suicide back when he was 11 years old. Uh, a bunch of cops went in his house, and they didn't give a damn about this little 11-year-old black kid that was bleeding on the floor. There was one cop only one cop that cared about him and was the supervisor started yelling at all the other cops like I can't believe y'all stepping over this boy this is a life right here and that one cop stayed with Lil Wayne uh, until he, that cop made sure Lil Wayne was okay this was a white cop Lil Wayne was black Lil Wayne was 11 ever since then the Lil Wayne will tell you the story himself ever since then he has not been like the rest of us and saying fuck the police or anything Lil Wayne likes the police and he likes Donald Trump and he likes Republicans Lil Wayne has said he never experienced racism he says that, you know, during the whole time where everybody was protesting police brutality and George Floyd, Lil Wayne came out and said, listen, we can't be mad at all police. Maybe we should just be mad at this one cop, Derek Chevron or whatever his name is, but not every cop because all cops are not bad. Like Lil Wayne is that guy, right? So for him to meet up with Donald Trump is not surprising. Lil Wayne is a great rapper, one of the goats in my top five, but I definitely would not look to Lil Wayne for anything political or anything that has to, that has to do with politics ever. And Lil Wayne has never spoken about politics before, right? Not in his music, not in interviews or anything like this. So why would he start now? It's clear that Donald Trump is using black celebrities to try to get the black vote. But it's not just Donald Trump, yo, because Joe Biden, the other side, the Democrats are using black celebrities to do the same thing. While Donald Trump is using Lil Wayne and Ice Cube, even though Ice Cube's heart is in the right place, he's being played like a pawn, right? Uh, Joe Biden is using Ludacris. He's using Young Jeezy. Joe Biden is using Charlie Clips and DNA to have a whole rap battle about how they should vote for, uh, vote for Joe Biden, right? So it's just crazy because both sides are pandering to us but that shows you something that our vote is really important to them um so take that uh how you will but know that you have the power to change shit because they are fiending to get our vote and our attention right um let me know what y'all think about this in the comments how crazy is that she has on adidas sneakers you telling me those Sorry. are good no. Oh, yeah. talk right here. I don't want to talk about something. This is something you probably yourself. This is something you probably yourself. This is real racist. He has on Adidas. She has on Adidas. What the fuck is it? Adidas and Nike. No, 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 no. Adidas and Nike. We're just waiting for the cops to get here. We're just waiting. We're just waiting to have a conversation with you guys. All right, so that was a clip of a couple getting kicked out of a restaurant uh, in Atlanta. The restaurant is called Umi, right? And the reason why they were getting kicked out, it's a black couple, they were being kicked out because they had on sneakers because the policy of this restaurant is that you can't go in there with sneakers on. All right, fine, cool, man. Uh, there's a lot of restaurants here in New York that won't let you in if you have sneakers on or if you don't have a shirt with a collar or whatever the case may be. All right, cool, right? Um, but the only thing is, though, that there was a white woman that was sitting right there at the bar that 
had on sneakers, right? So, you know, they're kicking these black people out, but they didn't say anything about the white woman. And you could hear the guy, uh, the black guy who was part of the couple who they're kicking out saying like, you bought this on yourself. You don't have to say anything to us. That woman right there has on sneakers. And let's just go outside and talk. We'll go talk outside. No, I want to talk right here is what he said. And then they said, okay, fine. Well, we'll just wait for the cops to be called, right? Which is crazy because it's illegal to wear sneakers. Now, wait, you know what? It's not illegal to wear sneakers. It's illegal to be black. That's what it is. That's what it is. My bad, my bad. So anyway, uh, T.I. went and got himself involved in this whole situation. Uh, basically, what he did was he was like, oh, shit, I see that we're going to have to shut down Umi's. Uh, well, he went on his Instagram and he was like, I see we're going to have to shut down Umi Sushi just like we did in Houston, right? Then he actually went down to Umi's and sat down with the owner of the restaurant. Uh, but it's a mutual respect. We got to start from a mutual respect. We got to respect one another. You dig what I'm saying? If, if, if I respect your restaurant and I respect where you're coming from, I can only do that if I know that you are respecting me. You are respecting my culture. You are respecting my hard-earned money when I come in here. And if not, then we're going to have a standoff. But that ain't what we want. We want to work together in unison as a community. So uh, we sit right here, man, and we putting it together. We, we both feel that, you know, if you can't wear sneakers, you can't wear sneakers at all. It ain't no these sneakers are cool and no sneakers are not. That ain't going to work. So the sneaker thing, you're going to have to, you're going to have to wipe that. And, and, and he, you, are, you, you have agreed, did you not? Absolutely. We said that's the first step we're going to take. And we're going to take the sneaker policy away because I think, again, as a sneakerhead, It'd be slightly hypocritical if I if I had that rule and, and didn't abide by it. It'd be exponentially hypocritical. Uh so T.I. sits down with the owner of the restaurant to figure out why a black couple was being kicked out for wearing sneakers while a white woman who had on sneakers was just sitting right there at the bar, right? Uh, this dude says, I'm so sorry I didn't realize, the owner says, I'm so sorry I didn't realize that, you know, that woman had on sneakers too. We enforce this rule and I'm a sneakerhead. I love sneakers and trust me, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. It's not anything like those sneakers are cool and these sneakers are not. No sneakers are allowed, period. And I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, T.I. You are the man. Let's rectify this. Basically, he was copping, please, because T.I. confronted him, right? Um, which was crazy as hell. When T.I. did that, he went on live on his Instagram and did that shit, right? Um, but then a lot of people on the live, they were commenting like, yo, this is cool and everything that you went and sat down with this dude from the restaurant, but you acting like you're trying to save the restaurant. You acting like you're trying to give this dude some kind of excuse or way out. And why would you go sit down with the owner of the restaurant? around and not go sit down with the couple who got kicked out first right let's hear their side of the story first not just a big business owner who wants to try to cop please right um so ti then went back on his live and was like i couldn't get in contact with the couple i dm'd them i didn't have their phone number they didn't reach back out to me and that in order to just pull up on the guy in the restaurant it was easy because he's the owner of the damn restaurant as a matter of fact ti explains that he got the phone number for the couple from the owner of the restaurant Right, so I don't know if T.I. plans on sitting down with the uh, couple as well, uh, but this is what's going on for now. And it kind of seems like T.I., you know, did kind of cop please a little bit for this restaurant owner, but I really just think that he wanted to confront him and figure out why in the hell these people got kicked out in the first place, right? Um, but let me know what y'all think about this in the comments. All right, Joe, so Joe Button goes on Twitter and he's like, so I have COVID. I'm pretty sure this affects our pod schedule, right? Um, and this is crazy because, all right, at first when coronavirus hit, they were doing like the little Zoom kind of podcast thing. And that was cool for a little while, but that look and that aesthetic is trash. And we all know it, right? Joe Button knows it too. And maybe the viewership, I don't think the viewership was ever dropping, but you know, Joe Button was like, let's all get back into the podcast together, right? So they're in Park Squib in the living room uh, all together and Joe Button just test positive, right? Now, I'm sure that he was traveling around. Maybe he didn't get it from any of them. Um, it's not clear whether, you know, Mall Parks or, you know, anybody else from the show, Rari or anybody, Savon or anybody got it too. Uh, but Joe Button definitely is affected with COVID-19. So we wishing him a speedy recovery. And uh, yeah, let me know what y'all think about this in the comments.
All right, Joe, this is crazy, right? Um, so an employee at the Members Only Lounge in Atlanta um, got shot and killed for seemingly no reason at all, right? Um, the Members Only Lounge is actually owned by two chains uh, and his homegirl Snoop, right? We ain't talking about Snoop Dogg, and we're not talking about Snoop from The Wire. Uh, we're talking about two chains and his homegirl Snoop right here. Snoop from Atlanta, basically, right? Um, and the whole situation is, um, you know, this lounge is a Members Only Lounge. I mean, that's what it's called, and that's what it is, right? So in order to actually go here, you have to be a part of like a, a society. You have to apply to be a part of them online. Um, it's for like professionals. It's not really no hood spot. It's an upscale spot, right? Um, but I guess you know maybe a hood nigga or somebody was trying to get in. Um, the dude at the door was like, you know, it costs X amount of dollars to get in here, or you got to do bop 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 in order to get in here. Um, and maybe that dude felt offended or felt like the guy at the door was trying to play him because he pulls out his pistol and just shoots the dude in the chest, right? Um, and then he's rushed to the hospital and he dies about an hour later, right? Um, this whole situation is crazy. This is the 117th murder in Atlanta this year, right? Um, in the whole year of 2019, only, well, only uh, 99 people were killed, but now we're up to 117 and we still got three more months left to the year. So the mayor, uh, Keisha Bottoms, is like, listen, we really have to do something about these murders in Atlanta, right? So in Atlanta, things are getting crazy right now. And I'm sure that has a lot to do with COVID-19, social unrest, Donald Trump, the election year, uh, the 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 uh, Mayor getting sued by you know the the other the people in the local government just all kind of crazy stuff I'm sure like all of that has to do with the fact that the murder rate went up um, but yeah they got to get their shit together <laughs> in Atlanta yo um, let me know what y'all think about this and everything else in the comments down below don't forget to like comment share subscribe make sure you hit that notification bell follow me at Johnny Fastlane on Instagram and y'all already know what to do peace.